If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It's already says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in at Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. The alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash and sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed. A child shall lead them. To buy our merch. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. DJ Ben is up tonight, you guys. Yes, our sir stream Lee is going strong. Bobbert. You guys have heard of this band before. It's called Lamb of God. The name of the song is Now You've Got Something to Die For. Uh, DJ Ben says, This next song is just one I wanted to be done for a long time from one of my favorite LOG albums, Ashes of the Wake. It's better late than never. Lamb of God, here we go. Alert, Let me get my Lamb of God, now you've got something to die for. Let's do it. Oh, I love this song! trying to get the lyrics. <laughs> I wonder if they heard that weird noise that we heard. They heard that blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah. they have to, right? I don't know. It reminds me of when she said that, you know, in that book, the eerie sound. <laughs> oh, in space? The eerie sounds in space? Yeah. Man, you keep falling asleep every time I listen to that book. I'm not going to That's because you keep it starting anymore. it at 5 a.m. I'm not going to listen to you anymore. You can't start it at 5 a.m. That's too early. Like, like we stay up all night, and I then he start started it. I Literally, I can start whatever I want. All right, here we go, guys. Now you got something to die for. Let me go. Let's do it.
to die for that I was see uh, why you like this song man. lamb of god was uh <laughs> this is really like one of the first times i actually looked at the lyrics for this song yeah <laughs> uh-oh and <laughs> well united soundtrack you see what i'm saying like for uh-huh. certain, you know what i'm saying so that was like on the soundtrack it's i just, wondered it's just ironic but um it's a good song. You know, th- this was the metal that was happening during the GWAT Global War on Terror. Yeah. And uh, Lamb of God did a really good job. Even like the 11th Hour video, even though it was about alcoholism, mm-hmm. they made it about alcoholism in the context of a, a veteran who had returned oh, home oh, and all okay. this. And so like he was remembering all the shit that was going on and all that. Um so they did. I thought they did a really good job about like keeping the awareness about, you know, the war and the illegitimate, the illegitimate nature of it and all the rest of it. At the time, I, um, when it first first came out, you know, I didn't know anything, so I was like, oh, what the fuck? Don't you love our country? Blah blah blah. But the metal was so heavy, I was like, ah, <laughs> give it a pass. But I'll just say they're doing it to be, you know, to get on MTV or whatever. Yeah, it would be edgy. <laughs> you know, but like, you know, obviously. That's the thing that's just so crazy to me about, like, this whole thing, man. Like, that the people that were telling me, like, yo, this is an illegitimate war, blah, blah, blah. Now, like, you're all for all these wars. I'm like, what the hell? What's happening? It's like, I mean, it was our generation that? that was out there, you know what I'm saying? Like. 275s out there, you know, like, what are y'all doing? Like, at this point, we should be, like, mega skeptical of any mm-hmm. sort of, you know, yeah. push to get us into any sort of armed conflict. We should be, like, sour by this time about war. But, like, now it's crazy. It's funny to me. It's, like, all the right-wing people that were so pro-war back in the day. Yeah. And all the left-wing people that are not pro-war, they flipped. Why do you think that is? I think it's because th- this is my only this is my theory I came up with it today after a lot of thought people that are inclined to the right especially in our age bracket are more likely than not to have gone out to fight some way somehow and there's nothing that like rids you of the taste of war the more so well, and their, their families might have you and, your had had you had this, and your family well, had so, to yeah. deal with it, correct. Right. So now, all the folks on the right are like war fatigued. I see. You know, yeah. th- there are dudes. There are dude like John Wayne, like Wayne Bro type dudes that love the shit. Just mm-hmm. lo- love it. Love seeing people die. Love seeing their friends. Like they're they're really like. There's some people like that, but most people. I, my theory currently is just that. A lot of the folks on the right who are all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed for jihad because, oh, I want to prove myself, whatever, like, 
now you've had that experience yeah, and, and now you realize the cost of war and like you you're gonna do everything you can to avoid it meanwhile the left wingers who would not go to war mm-hmm are easily propagandized when their favorite actor or singer tells them that they need to support this war. That's the only thing I can come up with because it really doesn't make any sense to me. The way that the left dealt with Ukraine, I don't really under I to this mm-hmm. the only thing I can think about, really, of course nobody cares about Ukraine now because we're talking about the Israelis, but the only thing that I could think about was and this gets really conspiratorial like was Russiagate was the entire Russiagate thing not about Trump at all? Was it just about making Putin look bad so that you could then go and, you know, justify XYZ thing with the Russians? I have no idea. But, like, the the psychological job that's been done on most of our citizenry is crazy. It's absolutely crazy. You know? Yeah. No, 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 no. I, I was never a John... Like, a Wayne bro is, like, a very specific kind of dude. Like, he's a dude that, like, literally enjoys the shit. Like, they're, they're like... I don't even know how to explain it. Like, I, I, yeah, I don't I, even I, know how to explain it. But, like, I'm not that person at all in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> not at all. These guys get nightmares because they're afraid that they're going to get hit and not able to deploy. Like... Yeah, <laughs> those guys are like something's wrong with them. Um, make there, is there a lot of people like that? No, or are they pretty few and far between? No, no. I've I've met one and a half in my life, and I'm not even sure that that guy was really like that. Because it, it's you, you know. But anyway, like, so I don't, I, I I don't know, man. But like, the the when I'm looking at this, like lust for blood, a blind crusade. Yeah. The biggest thing for me, honestly, was like, and when they're talking about like democracy, like, you know, and like now you've got a certain group of people talking about democracy, 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 and I'm like, oh, vote for this candidate, save democracy. It's like, wait a second, dude, like you, the media, the intelligence community, you guys all came together to deceive the American public about a candidate during an election. Yeah. And then out of the same mouth, you're going to say that you're fighting for democracy. Like, I don't give a fuck who you're voting for or against. But, like, the thing that gets me the most is, like, how could you insult me like that to my face? Like, you went to social media, uh, big tech owners, and you gave them a script. You had them shut people down that disagreed with you. Like... How dare you Mm -hmm. say that you're out here for democracy? Mm -hmm. You wouldn't even let us get an informed vote. You wouldn't even allow us to have an informed vote over the two candidates that that they they put out to us. But now you've got a you've got a a, a, a political party now that's running around saying vote for us in order to save democracy. It's (laughs) fucking weird. And then you really have people like believing in it. Like well, then maybe that's why they do it. it they're, I maybe, mean, it's working. It it's working. I'm just blown away. Yeah. I'm blown away by how easy it's been. I don't know what, to, I don't know what to say. Exact verbiage was present data in the way that person X looks like this and person Y looks like that. I mean... And, and 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 the the thing I think that's ultimately the worst thing about all of this to me is that like this stuff gets exposed and people go yeah and they're completely not affected by it they don't care they're like yeah but as long as the person I hated didn't get into office it's all good it's like you're missing the big giant picture what yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I had a I had a very interesting discussion with a brother of mine about conspiracy theories and I said I said uh, I said right so like how do you determine what's a conspiracy theory and what's not like yeah. what's the what's the logo set you use and he said uh, well basically by the likelihood of the claim and I was like okay so you just use that? your own determination mm-hmm. to that. He's like, yeah. And I was like, okay, so anybody that comes to conclusions like that believes in more conspiracies than you is a conspiracy theorist, but you're like right down the middle. Like, does that make sense to you? Like, 
It's like I said, none of us believes Epstein killed himself, mm -hmm. but that's the line that our that our media they looked in the camera and said that, mm -hmm. and nobody's like, yo, what the fuck? Yeah, there's no accountability. Wait for a that. second, wait, yeah. why are you guys lying to us? Mm -hmm. Like nobody cares. It's like, what? <laughs> the guy maybe, maybe really he killed himself think... in prison. That's what I was telling the guy. I'm like, you don't believe Epstein killed himself? He goes, no. I'm like, okay, that's a conspiracy theory. I think all of us now can say that we, we could say with some pretty decent confidence that our own government assassinated a JFK. Mm -hmm. Like we could say that now. That's literally where the term conspiracy theory was born. Oh really? Yeah, it was Bush well, based off that situation. Yeah, because people were like, yo, this is weird, bro. I don't know about this. And that's when the term conspiracy no theory got kidding. done. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, what the fuck is going on? Like I don't, I, I, I don't know. Like it's crazy to me. <laughs> Things like uh, democracy and human rights and foreign policy speak as they actually exist are just justifications for American empire. Big facts. There are 195 countries in the world today and none is willing to uh, help Assange. That bothers me most. That's the, that's the other thing. Is it Julian Assange? I mean, we're not the only ones that have been going after him, but like a lot of people, but it's like, we're supposed to be the freedom of beacon and democracy and, and you, you beacon of freedom and democracy. And like you have people like, oh, you know, not every country has a First Amendment. It's like, yeah, man, like freedom of speech. And they're like, he should be running to America for, for, for shelter. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's insane. Yeah, exactly. It's crazy. <clears throat> and like everybody knows this is happening and both governments are doing. That's the thing that gets me. It's like Trump is a fascist. Trump is a fascist. I'm like, wait a second. Who chased Edward Edward Snowden out of America? Mm -hmm. You know, I Helen and I have disagree. I don't, I don't even know if Helen and I have disagreements about Edward Snowden because, to be honest with you, you know, I'm on I'm not on that I'm not on that side side. Of, you know, he was he was a domestic NSA guy. I don't know nothing about them people, like nothing. Like you know what I'm saying? So I don't know all the particulars. I'm just saying, like. We've got empirical data that our country has been operating in a fascistic way for decades, but the term only got trotted out for one guy, and mm -hmm. it's like the guy before him was way worse. The Verizon scandal where he's listening in on Americans, you know, he snuck that into the Patriot Act, the Rendition Act. Like, what are y'all talking about? It, it's, it's just insane. It's just, it's absolutely, absolutely insane. Yeah. Who is he contracting with hell? Yeah, see, that's always the essence of the, the discussion because those guys keep everything so compartmented. So look, he knew nothing about why certain data on hard drives he was replacing, etc., etc., etc. I I get it. That's, you know, you tech heads, that's how it is. That's how, that's how it is. But... You know, there's always, and there's always that debate between tech and ground. But like, but my point is like, you get all these names of people who are basically martyrs for, for freedom of speech or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like, somehow our media has been able to sit. You got millions of Americans that literally believe that Donald Trump is like this giant fascist, but that the guy that they voted for is not. They really, really believe that. It's like, there's nothing you can do to t tell them otherwise. It's like, okay. All right. I tip my hat. Yeah. Nope, Tom, you're still here. I, I tip, I, you know, I mean, <laughs> I, hey, those guys literally wrote the book on psychological operations. So shout out to you guys. Well done. Uh, I love this song. It's yeah, a classic it's song. A really it's a 9.8. Ah, that's what 9.8. 9.8. <laughs> 9.8 um yeah 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 shout out to all the uh political prisoners all over the world man i'll see you beautiful people on the other side of the break we have more heavy metal we'll on right the back. way I'll, I'll let uh hell have the, ha the last word about uh my man uh edward snowden she's not a fan she's not a fan all right guys we'll check you on the other side of the break we'll be right back <laughs> 